Good morning. My name is Richard Rindle. Uh, I was uh, hired at RCA in the Camden facility. I guess at that point in time it was uh, government's GCS, Government Communication Systems, uh, in 1973. Uh, I was hired at RCA uh, straight out of school um, uh, into actually the uh, rotational program. Now at, at RCA they had a introductory program for new engineers where you actually came in and were able to um, visit multiple uh, RCA sites and work on a five week interview uh, at, at four different job functions. And I was able to uh, actually rotate through four different areas. My final um, state was at uh, GCS, which is where I, I st stayed and spent my career. Um, and what was the first project that you got to work on? My first project within the GCS activity was uh, called the Tenley Sealy Program. Uh, turns out I worked for a uh, rather uh, well-versed engineer, Bob Torrey, uh, who was uh, assigned to manage a ASIC design activity. Um, the ASICs were there to support the Tenley Sealy program. Um, I believe the actual program was awarded to RCA uh, in the prior year, 1972. Um, they were taking on a rather extensive activity to develop a total of 36 LSIs. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have some background uh, because I actually had co-opt at IBM and actually had some prior background in ASIC fabrication and the processing involved with, with ASIC fabrication so that my, um, my, my background suited well to be groomed into an ASIC group that was assigned to this program. Uh, and they felt that I had enough, uh, I guess, capabilities and understanding that I might be a good asset to, to the program for this LSI development. So um, I worked for Bob Torrey, and we were doing early development of ASICs for a very comprehensive uh, program for the government. What was interesting within that activity is, is we were tying together a bunch of other divisional uh, involvements. Um, RCA has labs and other activities that were used to capitalize on capabilities. One of those capabilities was that uh, ATL had developed a cell family. That is the transistor structures and, and functional structures for ASIC utilization. They had coordinated with a second division, which was Somerville, New Jersey, which is, a, which is a fabrication facility. Now, those two facilities had done advanced IR&D work to develop ASIC capabilities. Now, interestingly enough, we used a additional division um, as part of the commercial um, TV group that actually did the artwork for the ASIC developments. So. Uh, early developments actually utilized a whole bunch of commercial and I, IRAD, uh, IR&D type of activities to uh, facilitate this uh, adventure, this, this uh, utilization of ASICs. So uh, I was able to uh, get in on the ground floor because I was actually probably one of the first engineers associated with this group that uh, was able to uh, bring all these pieces together and work towards a project goal. Um, I, was, I was very fortunate that uh, my manager, Bob Torrey at that time, uh, was very willing to put me under his wing, but he also gave me free latitude to do what I felt was right um, to uh, do the ASIC development. And were there any other major projects that you worked on during your career? No, it, well, during my career, yes. Uh, you know, it, it, it started with the uh, the Tenley Sealy programs, uh, but it certainly went on to uh, a m many different uh, ASIC related and digital design related programs. Uh, I probably, on the offing, is probably 30 or 40 different programs, but there was certainly Tenley Sealy, there was uh, uh, Vector, there was uh, um, 
at at this point in time, I can't quite remember them all, but I certainly, uh, I, guess I should have listed them down before I, uh, but uh, my, my involvement at RCA was heavily digital design, uh, primarily focusing in ASICs. Uh, the end of my career uh, targeted towards the development of the MCP, which is a multi-chip module, which incorporates ASICs. Backing back from that is we built a, a custom ComSec chip called the uh, uh, Unity, which was incorporated onto this uh, multi-chip module. Uh, prior to that, we had had multiple families of designs that were were targeted to um, enhance our our our, um, our capabilities within the the digital and ComSec areas to. Uh, meet cu customer requirements. And you mentioned uh, the one, your one supervisor. Um, what was it like with your other co-workers? RCA was great. Uh, it, it was really a, a family of people. Uh, there were a number of managers that had uh, cousins, brothers, uh, uh, relatives, wives, husbands working all within RCA. Uh, it was it was actually uh, felt like a, a family of people. Uh, you did, everyone was related to everyone else in a lot of respects. But the, the teamwork of the people was extremely good. Uh, I don't think there was ever a, a case where people could not work together or share their capabilities. Uh, specifically, we had a Fred Bartholomew who uh, we would comment on a daily basis that he didn't talk much. Uh, but whatever he did was extremely uh, uh, sharp, and, and, and his, his intelligence was, was pretty pretty far out. Um, him and both Bob Torrey didn't talk much, but they were extremely sharp individuals. Um, we had a number of characters. Uh, we had our Eddie Moses, we had our Kenny Funks, we had our George Halals, uh, all, all people that brought different uh, approaches to the work and different uh, characteristics of uh, of how they approach uh, approach things. Uh, Kenny Funk, uh, for example, uh, was actually the design engineer I f started working with initially, and one of his um, pet habits or idiosyncrasies is he used pencils down to they were till they were nubs. So he would constantly have a, a box of uh, pencils on his desk and he would constantly be uh, sharpening them, shortening them, sharpening them, shortening them to the point where he would, he'd be working with uh, an inch long pencil um, doing his design work. Um, so actually as part of his retirement, I actually bought him a box of pencils and I shaved, cut them all down so they're only about three inches long, but they had a brand new eraser on the end of them because he was always working with pencils that had no erasers. So I felt it was a little appropriate. I says, so uh, so uh, he was one of those that uh, was, was a character, just bottom line, it was a character that uh, had uh, a lot of influences on me over, over the years. Um, Kenny Funk would also get us into trouble every once in a while. Uh, he had a good habit, bad habit, um, a lot of our designs are classified. So what Kenny would do is he would take what he considered unclassified uh, designs and actually would cut them out. So he would get rid of the classifications and uh, the things that, that made a particular design classified, or at least in his mind, and would use that as cut and paste items in some of his documentation and the likes. And every once in a while, we got into trouble with security when they found some of his paperwork that wasn't quite as sanitized as we would normally uh, be expected to, to be. Uh, we had uh, an associate of ours, uh, George Halal. Interesting story with George. Uh, George was a, a hardware design engineer that worked on a lot of the hardware that we, we built up. Uh, my primary tasks was to do the design work uh, for the ASICs, uh, follow them through to the factories, 
to be fabricated at the ASIC level and then bring them back for the equipments. The equipment people would then put them into their boards and then do the final integration at the equipment level. We had one um, individual, George Halal, and I believe he was, uh, he wasn't Iranian, he was from Serbia. And um, this is back in the days when uh, there was a lot of hijackings and uh, bomb threats on planes and the likes. And a lot of times we were asked to bring equipments to and from different army bases. And the only way we were allowed to bring these classified boxes is to hand carry them onto planes. And when we went to the airports, we would have a special piece of paper that says this box is classified, it's got to be hand carried. So um, George Lau was particularly assigned to this particular task of bringing this equipment to the, to the, to the base. Uh, had to fly an airline to get there. Uh, he, pr he presented the documentation and uh, this box, which was double wrapped in, in brown papers and, and not, were, they were not allowed to open it. And uh, he, uh, he went up to the, the counter and apparently made a little bit of a scene um, about getting this through and the fact that he had enough paperwork. And I remember distinctly the story coming back that apparently the final say-so on bringing any boxes or anything onto an airline is the pilot's. The pilot has the final say. He has responsibility for, for uh, uh, what goes on the airplane and what does not go on the airplane. Well, apparently they called the pilot out to talk to George. And George, by this point in time, had gotten even more elevated in his... Uh, insensitivity about opening the box up and uh, insistent on about bringing this box on the board with him. And uh, I remember the, the story that came back was is that the pilot says uh, that this man and this box are not going to be allowed on my plane, period. So he was thrown off the plane and was forced to go and get a, a, another, another airline to take him to uh, his final destinations. So bottom line, with his Syrian background, you know, he had the, the complexion that was a little bit sensitized at that point in, point in time. And uh, the fact that uh, we were in heightened security for uh, bombings and the likes, that he just, his particular demeanor, demeanor at the time didn't uh, pan out very well for that, for that flight. So. so there was lots of little caveats that always came up during the days and how to get things done and, 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 and people. And I think your original question was, is how was the people in the family and the people I worked with? Uh, I think the people were all very good. Uh, RCA was a family. And I, I miss, miss that, was crew, that crew of people. Uh, so kind of going along with uh, the RCA family and everything, a lot of people have talked about like the Christmas parties and like the outside of work um, type relationships. Um, do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Sure. Uh, and, well, the Christmas parties and the gatherings that were hosted by uh, the RCA families, uh, specifically uh, Don Parker. Don Parker had uh, Christmas parties every year or at uh, any special program um, milestones, uh, final deliveries, uh, contract wins, so, stuff like that. So Christmas parties were pretty interesting and, and friendly. Uh, everyone uh, had festive times. Uh, Don Parker was always uh, a very boisterous and, and fun-loving character. Uh, he would constantly try to egg people on and seem to have no limits as to what he would project uh, we should be doing or uh, uh, how, how far we should uh, um, party, how, 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 uh, how uh, complete we should, you know, have fun and dance and party and the whole bit. And I remember one specific time at one of, I believe it was a uh, program milestone, is that he had the group of engineers there and uh, 
Uh, he commented how we should be celebrating uh, for our great successes, and I made the recommendation that we should have champagne. And he uh, kind of says, well, go ahead. So I actually did order a bottle of champagne and wound up footing the bill for it myself because uh, uh, it was over and above what was allowed for by, uh, by the contracts and by uh, the, the company. But uh, certainly he was very big on celebrating successes and bringing the teams together. And I noticed, you know, I remember at all the Christmas parties, he always thanked the spouses for their contributions to the success of the, the RCA family. So, so it was, it was good. Um, so going on with that too, uh, with everything, all the relationships you had, what was it like to retire from RCA? Well, it turns out I wound up retiring from L3, uh, which is the fourth or fifth generation from the original RCA. Uh, you know, RCA was with us. Uh, I started there in 73. Um, I believe GE bought us out in 85. Uh, then we became um, Martin Marietta, combined to Lockheed Martin. Uh, Lockheed Martin then sold us off as L3. And uh, I, uh, was, I retired from L3. Now it, uh, I retired. Um, I had, had contemplated my final retirement date for a while, and, and the opportunity was uh, proposed to me several times as to when to retire. Uh, I was having fun. Uh, I, I, my entire career, I enjoyed my time at the RCA and the, and the associated companies. Uh, and I always kept pushing off my retirement date because I was having fun. Uh, it, but it did get to the end where a, a situation came up where it was time for le to leave, and, and I did retire uh, after 41 years. So it was it was quite a while. Um, and do, are you from South Jersey originally? Originally, I'm from New York City area. Okay. Uh, I uh, was born and raised in on Long Island. Uh, I went to school in Brooklyn. Uh, spent you know most of my early years up in that area. Uh, commuted to school. Um, I co-opt with IBM. Uh, it turns out I was able to, to work with them up in their uh, chip manufacturing facility up in Burlington, Vermont, uh, which kind of looked very good on my resume. Uh, the people that, that saw that particular uh, note on my resume kind of uh, highlighted that and, and uh, tied that into uh, my future endeavors. Um, once I graduated from school in 1973, I wound up coming straight down to South Jersey, actually with a, a fellow uh, graduate from Pratt. I went to Pratt Institute. Uh, him and I were both hired by RCA to come down to South Jersey, and uh, him and I roomed together for a couple of years, and uh, we put our roots in down here, and I've been down here since. Um, after your years of working with RCA, were you able to see um, any measurable changes in the area because of RCA in the community? Well, RCA seemed to have been everywhere. Um, I, uh, every part of the South Jersey area, but it's surprising that the, the few number of people that I actually bump into out on the streets. So RCA is Obviously, there, you know, part of the um, Lockheed Martin uh, divisions are still around. Um, you know, the, the uh, computer group was in and out of Cherry Hill for a while. Uh, so there's been a lot of growth and retraction of the RCA presence from a company point of view. It's interesting, I don't meet as many people out on the street as you would expect with the amount of people that worked at RCA, but I do bump into them here and there. It's, it's, it's great. And um, would you call uh, your career at RCA, would it be just a job for you? Or no, no, I, no, it, it wasn't just a job. Uh, I, I had been on several occasions told that I take my job either too seriously or I take it too emotionally. Uh, I felt it was actually, uh, I was passionate about my job. I felt that uh, 
I was fortunate that I was doing something that I really liked, loved. Um, I was given a lot of leeway in making the decisions I did. I felt that the, in most cases, my management allowed me to freewheel it, uh, do my own little thing, or to pursue aspects of the job that uh, they didn't direct me to do. Um, I was fortunate in the fact that I never had a day where I didn't like to go to work. Certainly there were things, certain things of the job that I didn't like, but uh, in most cases um, I was always more positive than negative on anything. Um, I never resented going to work. Certainly there were issues, certainly there were problems, certainly there was stress, certainly there was aggravation, but I never felt that it was a job. I felt it was uh, a hobby that paid my way. Uh, I, I felt that, you know, uh, in, in, over the years I've had the opportunity to um, work with uh, a number of engineers working for me, uh, cultivating them in, in how they pursue their careers. Um, I try to help them grow just as, as RCA had helped me grow. So I certainly try to instill upon them or pass on to them the same type of either passion or enjoyment of their job. I, I told them, I says, if, if you don't like your job, there's, there's, uh, it, it's not as much fun. Uh, you really should enjoy your job and you're not going to like every aspect of it. You're not going to like to be told what to do on some occasions, but certainly uh, uh, your job pays for you to go through life and you might as well enjoy as much of it as you can. So I always encourage people to find, follow their passion whether it was with working with me, working against me, or, or working somewhere else. So a lot of my friends, a lot of the people that did work with me, possibly left because they followed their passions, and I had no problem with that. I always wish them the best. I said it's better to go to a job that you enjoy than to, to go to a job that you, you hate. So it was kind of a, my, my approach on, uh, on working.